Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AIT for rolling my eyes at my boyfriend's proposal after 25 years of begging. Yesterday, my 52F boyfriend of 30 years, 53M, proposed to me after dinner. He just walked towards me holding a box and said to open it. It was a ring, and I had pictured this moment a million different times, but never thought I'd be so apathetic. My boyfriend then said that he was retired now and wanted to kick back and enjoy life with me, and he would love to do it all with me as his wife. A nice speech and all, but from the five-year mark of our relationship onwards, I'd been making clear my deep desire to marry, and was consistently dismissed given empty promises and gaslit. We had been through the gamut with therapy, and one counselor implied that me telling him we needed to go to therapy and getting his butt on the couch still meant nothing if his mind had been made up. I was in denial about the fact he was just giving me the false illusion of progress to stall. My boyfriend and I have four kids. The oldest three are adults, while the youngest is 15. He was sleeping over elsewhere when this all went down. All of our kids went to a private school filled with typical Southern soccer parents. I had to endure PTA mom's jabs about me not sharing a last name with my kids. For teen years were hell because the other kids would taunt my kids by saying, your dad would rather sin and go to hell than marry your mom. My BF's mom would tell him marriage would be selfish on my part, it is just a piece of paper. My BF ended up rising up the ranks until he became an executive. I was a SHM, so I felt like there was always a power imbalance, exasperated by the fact I could be tossed at any time. I partly stayed because I wanted my kids to have the best life, and because I felt lucky and proud to be partnered with such an intelligent successful man, I also loved him. These past few years my boyfriend's career has taken a downturn. He will never be poor, but the company he was part of took a nosedive during 2020, and he made enemies out of associates he board members. He decided to step back from his role and take the generous severance agreed upon. Now he is living off his investments and wants to relax. I did not like how his career ended and how he treated people, and I've been deciding whether I wanted to leave and find somebody else after our youngest turned 18. So the proposal was a shock because I hoped that he noticed I had avoided conversations about the future as of late. He rattles on about downsizing our house so we can travel and also cutting back on our other expenses, but we're not married, so it's all his money house anyway. He did notice my eye roll and was offended. He asked what was wrong, and I said that suddenly, now that he was downsizing, I was good enough to marry. He got mad and said that now that he's downsizing and no longer an executive, I suddenly think our relationship is disrespectful, and started implying I was a gold digger. I was so angry that I walked out and said I might just go out looking for a respectful relationship because I didn't know what respect was anymore. AITA? My boyfriend and I had not spoken since the engagement fight. I've been with him long enough to know that when he goes and closes the bedroom door before I get in, that's a signal that I should sleep in one of the guest rooms, so I did that. However, this morning, I broke the ice. I told him about how dismissed I felt over the years. I also said that we are both in our 50s, and these last few years have taught us that people at work who kiss the ground you walk on one day, can easily turn on you the next. And true partners in life are valuable, and hard to find, so I wished he'd treat me like I'm valued. Instead, he treats me like he thinks prettier, better and just as loving is always around the corner. I apologized for the eye roll but told him that if he wanted marriage I wanted a quick, committed timeline and genuine happiness from him to marry me, I don't need a big party. He listened to me and finally asked if this was about the money security. He told me that being an executive's girlfriend required things of me, but I could have if I wanted to work. He said he doesn't think I'm grateful enough for the position in society I was in due to his career. But that he's not mad about the eye roll, he said he didn't succeed by being that sensitive. He went on to say I was not his prisoner, so I could leave at any time. But, to remember, he won't tolerate being made my prisoner, either via manipulation. He said that the engagement ring was mine for what it was worth, and I could do whatever I wanted with it. He will also not be accused of not providing for his daughter, so be assured he won't shirk child support. The day he felt what I said before was emotional blackmail. So he no longer wants to go forward with marrying, but says if I'd like to travel with him, that's fine. His traveling is non-negotiable, so if I wanted to get a job, it would have to be remote. It was a sad conversation, and I spent a few hours alone after that. I felt I had nothing to lose, so I just asked him if he would support me getting an associates, but that most associates for technical careers were in person. He then dropped the bombshell that if I wasn't traveling with him, he wasn't going to go those periods without sex. His callousness astounded me, because he was back to take it or leave it. We fought again with me saying we're all feeling the effects of age, I've supported him through health issues, and if he thinks he can just find somebody who has that loyalty I've shown him, he's wrong. At this point, I'm looking for ways out. I can't say I haven't been tempted to say I'll travel with him and try to get a remote job, but I also realize how resentful I am that he continues to need to have the power in the relationship. 
I don't think I'll ever know my value truly, but something is telling me there has to be better out there, at least in a partner. I really wish this update could have been positive. But I'm not doing well. But what remains is hope. Hope in the kindness of others, my grown kids, employers, courts, even my kid's dad. Hope in the value of love that I've given so freely to my kid's dad. I was raised to believe that even those who don't appreciate the love I've given them will eventually self-actualize and pay it back. Here's what has happened since. Since my kid's dad accused me of trying to keep him an emotional prisoner, I tried to show him I valued his freedom. I gave him his space and showed that I could live life without trapping him. I started doing that right after our discussion. His reaction was anger. After our talk, he started glaring and picking fights over everything the speed at which I did housework, my spending within his allowance, and cut it to nearly zero. Asked for the ring back during an argument. I took the comments to my post to heart. In particular, advice told me that I should refuse to leave the house if badgered. Just a few days after our conversation about the engagement, he picked up a fight and accused me of ignoring him. He said he wanted me out. I said no, I deserve to be here. He responded by sending a lawyer a notice telling me to vacate that day. It happened so quickly I was too shocked to react. My kids were torn between dad's bluffing and trying to leave. But now he's filed to evict. It's up to the courts now. I tried looking for legal aid, but the person I talked to was cold and implied that my status as a mom and partner wouldn't protect me from eviction. I've tried sending out applications for office jobs. But friends told me to be kind to myself, because if one rejection comes, something better will happen. My adult kids suggested I apply for SNAP. Food stamps and I have an out of shame. They said if I do and dad, and I no longer live together, the government will help me collect child support. My grown kids said they couldn't risk upsetting, dad. My oldest told me a gas station was hiring night shift. And he'd try to help once he graduated. Just when I decided to be grateful for the job, they rejected me after an interview where I felt I spoke well. That hurt. But I keep having hope because every day, new remote and non-remote jobs are posted, saying they'll train the right candidate. It seems I am applying to every corporation with the hope that one of them will take a chance on me and give me an interview that I will ace. See me for somebody pulling yourself up. I know my boyfriend wants me to beg, but I don't know if that would make him drop the suit. I just don't know anymore. I am in my corner of the house, trying to keep things normal and applying like it's a job. I don't know what else to say, but that ends my current update. I maintain hope and dignity. The unconscionable happened. A judge is letting my ex-boyfriend evict me. A judge is supposed to uphold the laws of fairness and morality. And for years I assumed kindness was found in favor of my ex-boyfriend. My head is spinning. I have not found a job yet. And I did everything right. I applied to hundreds upon hundreds of marketing jobs online. I've gotten three responses, but they asked me to download communication apps to do the interview, and their instructions are hard to understand. I don't do well with non-concrete directions, so I got too aggravated to respond. However, at this point, I'm desperate enough to interview even there. I've taken the advice to apply for non-marketing jobs. My older daughter wrote me a resume for an office assistant job for a church that only offered 8 to 10 hours a week at $2 and over minimum wage. I got called for an interview. The pastor seemed disappointed after seeing me and greeted me in a different tone than he had greeted the next applicant who came in, a woman in her mid-twenties. Horrible behavior from a mid-thirties man, he even called me, ma'am, in this apprehensive tone. I did not get the job, but I feel bad for whoever does. I only have a few days before sheriff arrives. I called my kids for help. My legal aid attorney predicted I'd only get visitation until I had a stable place. And child support would likely be enough to only partially pay for motel living, so I needed to quickly get a job. How can the world treat a mom like this? My adult kids arranged to meet me and told me there was a reason even their grandma called my ex an alley cat. They offered to sneak food from dining halls when I visited and lend me clothes for interviews. But their dad laid down the law regarding sending money, and they will not send me any money. When they get jobs, they will also prioritize their own savings, and I should not expect any money. And that it's not my fault, but at some point, the shows of fickle affection they've seen during their childhood, where they faced bullying and watched people like me who are kind be scorned, jaded them. And in all that instability, accomplishments and money were the only constants, and that has made them emotionally apathetic. But that is hard to fix, because it goes hand in hand with the overactive having a sense of self-preservation they've acquired. They blame it on watching how self-preservation got their dead far, and the lack of it crushed others. I could sell the few things my ex did not bother to claw away from me, I have enough to book a room at a motel for about a week, but I don't know. When I got a motel room, I asked my new 16-year-old if she wanted to stay with me, she started crying and begging her dad to let me stay. 
I will fight for custody, with every ounce of strength I have. But I'm guessing her siblings tell her to enlist self-preservation, and stay with her dad. I understand I do. But she still needs her mom. I'm in contact with a shelter. Hopefully, I can find somebody who will fight for me to get housing. But I don't know what my future holds.